Christmas has always been my favorite holiday. It's also my birthday. So it was always special to share my birthday with Jesus. And I'm very pleased that I have an, a lovely nativity set to enjoy. This is all done counted cross stitch and beading on perforated paper. Then it was uh, attached to the wood figures that were done with a scroll saw. Uh, the Kings were, were published the first year of this set, and they were so spectacular that I just had to do them. I love to do the beading, so this was perfect. The next year, the Holy Family came out um, in kit form, and then the Angel and Shepherds, so I could add to my nativity each year. I just think it's very special, and I, I'm delighted to share it with you. This is one of my favorite nativities. It is from Mexico and it's made from recycled auto parts. Now I was drawn to it because I love creativity and I am also a real recycling fan, but I was also drawn to it by the depiction of the wise men. Now it's very interesting to even include wise men on a nativity set because wise men from Matthew's account didn't even appear uh, the night of Jesus' birth. They came later when Jesus was older and the family was out of the stable. But I love having the wise men included in the set, and I particularly love these wise men. As you can tell, the, their headdresses and their animals are all different, suggesting that they came from different lands, and they have different backgrounds. Of course, we know they had different gifts, uh, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh that are uh, representative of Jesus's role as a king and as a priest and as the sacrifice for our sins. Uh, but I also love these wise men because they show a diversity of believers in Jesus Christ, that wise men and women of all races and nationalities have 
sought and found uh, Jesus to be their Savior. I have too, and it's certainly a time of great joy to celebrate his birth. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan, earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone, snow had fallen, snow on snow. Helaman 14, 1 through 6. And now it came to pass that Samuel the Lamanite did prophesy a great many more things which cannot be written. And behold, he said unto them, Behold, I give unto you a sign. For five years more cometh, and behold, then cometh the Son of God to redeem all those who shall believe on his name. And behold, this will I give unto you for a sign at the time of his coming. For behold, there shall be great lights in heaven, insomuch that in the night before he cometh there shall be no darkness, insomuch that it shall appear unto man as if it was day. 3 Nephi 1.19-21 And it came to pass that there was no darkness in all that night, but it was as light as though it was midday. And it came to pass that the sun did rise in the morning again according to its proper order. And they knew 
that it was the day that the Lord should be born because of the sign which had been given. And it had come to pass, yea, all things, every whit, according to the words of the prophets. And it came to pass also that a new star did appear according to the word. Matthew 2, 1 through 12. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Uh, I'm Jim McCullough, um, Reverend Jim McCullough. I'm pastor at Topeka Church of the Brethren and um, First Christian Church in Holton, Kansas. The story of the birth of Jesus Christ means everything to me. When I hear the story from Luke's Gospel, uh, having been raised on a farm and milked my own cow, I smell a cow barn. I know what they smell like. And yet, I also hear the story in, of, of the Magi coming to visit. And there's, this, there's the fragrance of frankincense. And I think the paradox that of, 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 of how these two things can mix. So to me, the real significance of the story of the birth of Jesus is the paradox. I think of Jesus, the King of Kings, laying in a manger, and Herod, the King of the Jews, in his palace, surrounded by gold and marble. And I also think about how it was that Herod was overly overwhelmed with um, fear and anxiety and insecurity when the Magi were told, and this is in Matthew's Gospel, when the Magi came to visit the Christ child, they stopped in at the local palace on their way, saying, where is he who's been born King of the Jews? And, and Herod had no clue. One of the paradoxes of the story of the gospel, this paradoxes of the story of the birth of Christ, is that these magi, far, far away, wise men we call them, kings sometimes we call them, um, <clears throat> from far, far away could see a star that led them to the city of Bethlehem. And yet the people right there in the backyard or in the palace courtyard saw nothing. Is that paradox? It seems like a paradox to me. But when the wise men came in and asked Herod, where is he? Herod didn't have a clue where this was happening. But he was extremely insecure in the realization that was somebody was looking for a king uh, besides him. He was insecure about losing his power. Jesus didn't come to establish an earthly kingdom. 
he came to establish the kingdom of God. And it wasn't built on the kind of power that the palace understood. But it set off a whole um, uh, 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 a period of uh, inquiry into the countryside. Herod set out an edict of destroying all the male children just because he wanted to make sure that he was able to do away with anyone that would threaten his power. So the king of kings, the Lord of lords, um, the one born in a stable and laying on a pile of straw, had to leave with his father and his mother and became a refugee. This Messiah did not come, this uh, Messiah did not come exclusively for the Jews. And to me, that's the significance of the Magi coming from a land far away. Um, they're coming out of what would now be Iraq, Iran, uh, Persia. They weren't Jews. They were coming to claim a Messiah, not just for a messianic promise in the old, old story of the Jews. They were coming to proclaim a Messiah for all of the world. So these characters all have significance for me. Mary, Joseph, the kings, magi, um, the shepherds, all of them have their purpose and their significance in the story. Al-Hadabaran. Shalom, Lake. Shalom, Lark. They knew. Lay